Uh, I mean, sometimes you have night, nights like this, and you know we shot the daylights out of the basketball uh, to start the game in particular. We scored 39 points our first 19 possessions, uh, which is difficult to do. But our, our ball movement was outstanding, and we scored in a lot of different ways. And at the same time, I thought our defense the first 15 minutes of the game was, was on point. Uh, the communication was good. Uh, the effort was good. The energy was good. And, uh, you know, we took a team that had, <coughs> that had been struggling some and, and threw the first punch, and that, that was our goal coming into the game. Questions for the student-athletes? <coughs> to both of you guys, that opening 12, 13 minutes, about as well as you've seen your, you guys play? I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, we want to jump on right away and uh, just not give them any reason to uh, to, to stick around. And um, I thought the starting five did a really good job of going out there and throwing the first punch. Uh, I think defensively, we definitely took him out of rhythm um, early in the game. They used to like to run a lot, a lot of stuff for uh, assignments to see if they could get him going. And we did a good job as a team to, you know, kind of take that away initially. And then offensively, we just you know do what we always do: keep the ball moving, and uh, whoever is hard gets to shoot the ball. And uh, I guess it's uh, safe to say that you're out of your shooting slump, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would say the last couple of games, um, I, I've got, a, I've got a, my, my feel back a little more confident. Uh, my arm's feeling good, so um, and the guys are really good at job of finding me in stride and not making me get out of rhythm well with the pass or, or it hit at my feet, so I, it, it really helps when they do something like that. Ethan, did you feel the earth tremble a little bit when you made that second two-point basket? <laughs> um, I, it, it, Doug gave me both those assists, so uh, he, he did a really good job of looking on the, of just uh, finding the points in the zone where they weren't. And, um, he, he really just gave me layups there, so that was nice of him. As a player, when you're up 42 and 12, is it, is it tough to, to stay focused, or do you mean keep going to work? Uh, I think it's pretty difficult, but uh, you know our coaching staff stresses that we shouldn't look at the score. You know, keep doing what we're doing, especially defensively. I think we kind of went away from that after uh, you know the score kind of got out of hand. But you know, it's something that we have to get better at. Uh, we got to get better regardless of what the score is. Uh, we're gonna find we're gonna play different kind of teams and different kind of competition who are gonna be able to come back from uh, deficits like that. So we got to stay you know mentally and physically prepared. I think. <coughs> Obviously, we did a good job to start the half in the first half to get him out of rhythm, and we just need to continue that momentum as the game carries on. John, as Coach talked about the ball movement, you guys had 28 assists on 34 baskets. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, we have a bunch of unselfish guys on our team. Uh, you look at the score uh, sheet, you know, Greg only scores two. Uh, Doug scores below his average at 16, but he has three assists. Uh, Chad plays a phenomenal game and has nine assists uh, on its own. So, you know, we have a bunch of unselfish guys that help shooters like myself, Ethan Avery, you know, keep our feet set and be ready to shoot the ball. And, you know, it, it's really easy to play with a group like this that, you know, guys really don't care what the numbers, what their individual numbers are going to look like at the end of the day. They just want to make sure that we're up at the end of the game. So, you know, it's a lot of fun and, uh, you know, we have a great group of guys in the locker room. Do you guys feel a night like this coming out pregame or is it when the first couple of shots start to go down and then you realize that it's a night like this? I don't. I think as a whole group, uh, once we see one shot go in, the second one gets a little easier, and we're able to build on it and build on it. I think uh, one of our one of our bad habits is we need to we like to see our shots go in before we start playing really tough nose defense. So I think as, as a group, when when shots are falling, then I think we really start getting into it a little faster than we should than we have been. Take two more. Forty-five, you guys, ninety-one points came off the bench. Uh, what do you guys think of the the bench as a whole? This performance. Uh, you know, it starts with Ethan being able to come in and you know stretch the floor and knock down some deep threes. Uh, that opens up the lane for our guards to drive and for our big guys inside to you know uh, make their post moves. And then uh, you have contribution from guys like Nevin came off and did an unbelievable job tonight. Avery did a, a great job defensively when myself or Grant were off the floor. So uh, you know it kind of came from everyone, and that's what you like to see. Uh, teams are gonna have to figure out a way to you know take away a few of our options, and we gotta show that we're able to. You know, go deep in our bench and, and still produce. So it was nice to see something like this uh, tonight. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Questions for Greg McDermott.
Coach, you mentioned uh, after the Evansville game that Avery's continued efforts and practice and his work ethic, despite not meeting minutes, was an example to the younger players who haven't been meeting minutes on the floor. Do you think Nevin's performance tonight is a reflection of that example? I was pleased with the way Nevin played. You know, he, he, he has practiced a little bit better. Uh, now his challenge is to do it consistently. Um, because it, really, that's what I'm looking for off that bench. You know, when I put Ethan Rocky in, <coughs> excuse me, when I put Ethan Rocky in, I know what I'm going to get, uh, effort-wise and execution-wise, and and I've grown to trust Avery in the same way through a lot of hard work on his part. And now Nevin's challenge is to take that next step and to be able to do it every single day, and that's with any young player. Uh, but tonight was certainly a step in the right direction. How tough is it for you to keep the players focused on a night like this when the score gets out of hand so early? You know, as coaches, we, we attempt to try to get them not to look at the scoreboard. And um, I just felt when we got that big lead, we, we maybe threw some passes that weren't necessarily the type of passes we usually throw. Um, trying to throw the, <clears throat> the pass that gets through one out of five times when we want the pass that gets there five out of five times. And, uh, but it's, it's human nature. I understand it. Um, but, uh, you know, we did what we had to do to, to win the game. And the start of the game is usually so critical, especially when we move our home crowd into the game. And it was, uh, I thought our guys on both ends of the floor really competed tonight. Was that about as good as you said the team play offensively as far as ball movement, shot making, and effort? <clears throat> yeah, you know, since the St. Joe's game, the first half, we had a similar half, uh, moving the basketball and scoring inside and out. You know, it's probably as well as we've played when Gregory hasn't been really part of the equation. but. You know, they plugged up the lane a little bit, and you know, when Gregory dove on some of the ball screens, when he gets a few, when he gets that dunk behind the defense, you got to make a decision on what you're going to do with your help. Um, and you know, when you help off Ethan, he's going to make you pay. So, um, I just like their execution. 28 assists on 34 baskets is you're doing something right.